Um, from your perspective, how is the first spring training going under the new leadership with uh, Mendoza and Stearns? You know, I think it's been, you know, everything I understand has been, you know, loose, uh, relaxed. Uh, you know, I mean, David's a professional, Carlos a professional. Um, you know, they're doing their job, doing it well. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited by kind of what we're putting together here. David has talked a lot about you know, the concept of competing this year while also not doing anything that would stop you from being sustainable. Uh, yeah. To what extent do you feel like you've been able to achieve that, whether it's yeah. through the offseason and what you guys are doing now? Listen, when we're in spring training, you know, I mean, the, the, the pitching looks really terrific so far. and that, I mean, that's a real plus. Um, you know, we've talked about being competitive, and, and uh, my expectation is we will be. Um, you know, I think the club looks pretty good. I think... I think, you know, the general expectations are pretty low, and I think we're going to surprise to the upside. How tempted, if at all, have you been to add more? Well, that's, that's not my decision. That's, that's David's decision, you know, and, and obviously if there's something to do, he'll present it to me, and otherwise, you know, the club looks good, and, and uh, you know, I, you know, we're two weeks away from, actually 10 days away from the first game, and so it's getting a little late to add. Steve, you were obviously, you know, very excited about the David hire. Now that you've had a few months working with him, what have you learned about him since making that decision? Yeah, I think he's in, you know incredibly thorough, patient, um, thoughtful. You know, thinking about not not what you know what what's you know short term, what's best in the short term, but also what's best in the intermediate and long term. And and you know, we're following a plan. You know, and we've been very clear about our plan. And we want to play our, you know, our younger players and, and find out what we have. And, uh, you know, I fully expect that's the way it's going to go. You mentioned, you know, you think you can surprise people. What about the roster makes, gives you that optimism? Well, I mean, when you talk to the players, they say the defense is going to be, you know, so much better than last year. I mean, last year we were giving four outs in an inning. And so, uh, you know, I think you can see it. You know, we're, we're in almost every game in spring training, and I suspect that's the way it's going to look during the season. And if you're, you know, if, if you have you have good defense and, and, and the relief pitching looks pretty, you know, pretty strong, looks like we have a lot of depth there, which means we're going to be in a lot of games. And if you're in the game, you got a chance to win. Steve, would you yeah. expect if you're in this thing halfway through the season, you have a chance to build by adding some players that yeah. they would be able to do that? Listen, I mean, you know, I'm open, to, you know, we're going to be opportunistic, you know, we'll, we'll assess it when we get there. Um, you know, the goal is to make the playoffs and, you know, and I'm, what, what's my job? My, gear is to, my job is to support David and the baseball ops and the team in any way we can to make those, make the playoffs. What would qualify as a successful season in your mind? I think making the playoffs. You know, I think, you know, I think that would be, um, you know, obviously last year was a real disappointment. You know, we came in with high expect expectations and, and, uh, and that's, you know, and when you get there, you know, you, you, I wasn't expecting what happened happened. And so, um, you know, but, I, you know, I think this year, I think we've built up sort of the floor of what's possible. And, and um, you know, I think... Um, Listen, there are a couple of great teams in the in the National League, but other than that, I think we're as competitive as any other team. How big is yeah. the challenge when maybe one of those great teams is in your division and looks set up for a little while here? Well, yeah, they, you know, I guess you yeah, assume you, you mean the Braves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean they certainly look great, right? And uh, but you know, you saw this futures game the other day, and for the first, I mean, I, for the first time, I'm excited about what we're building in this farm system. I mean. We hadn't developed pitching in a long time, and, and for the first time, it looks like we have depth down there. You know, we have, you know, six, seven, eight pitchers that potentially could be, you know, our, our next starters, and, and next future starters. And, and, uh, and that, to me, that's exciting because pitching is so freaking expensive, <laughs> you know, in baseball today. And, and uh, you know, so, you know, if we can start building a team where we have some young, fresh blood, and then surround it with veteran talent. I, you know, that's a winning combination. Which of those guys in particular stands out and excites you? Well, I mean, you know, you saw Brandon Sprout. I mean, you know, he, he pitched great. Um, you know, obviously, uh, 
I thought Nolan McLean, you know, that's a new name that's come up that's kind of exciting. And, yeah, some, I, I read somewhere he had a 3,200 spin, whatever the hell that means. You guys know about, <laughs> you guys know about that, and I do. But that's not like, that sounds like a lot of spin to me. So. Um, and, and um, you know, so, you, you know, you're seeing talent. You know, obviously, you, you know, we have Christian Scott, and you got Dominic Hamill. He had a great outing and, and was one right after the, another. That's different, okay, and that's something to get excited by. Steve, you've yeah. often talked about how you're going to judge your ownership based on the ability to sustain a farm system and, and have, you know, the ability to bring up players from within. Yeah. Aside from the talent that you've now brought in player-wise, how do you feel about the progress of the development staff, the infrastructure that you've built to, to sustain that? I think you're seeing it, you know. I mean, uh, all you keep reading about is how uh, our pitchers are developing new pitches and, and uh, you know, increasing their velocity. And, and those are the things that I think those are really important markers. And so, I mean, you know, I think we've got something going here and, and something that I think is starting to look, you know, I don't want to get too excited because they're just prospects and you never know. But if you have enough of them, something's bound to, you know, good to happen. So, and I think that's kind of where we are now. Have you learned something along the way of maybe I shouldn't build up expectations regardless of? Well, I don't think I built up expectations. I think I went out and, and you know, clear, I was clearly bridging the talent gap, right? And the only way you could do it would be through free agency. I, th I think you guys kind of built up the expectations, right? I mean, I, listen, we're, you know, my baseball people will put together the best roster we can and, and uh, year, year by year and, and, let, and then let people only, you know, assess it and decide, you know, is this something to get excited by? Well, we'll uh, probably yeah. up because we yeah. heard the owner say he was trying to win a World Series in the last yeah. five years. Well, you know, as I'll say it, and I'll say it again, I said I'd be slightly disappointed, okay? okay. <laughs> so just let, let's clarify that, okay? You know, but in the end, you know, you got to set big goals. And, and uh, otherwise, you don't set big goals, you're never going to get there. And uh, we may not get there. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. It's really hard to win a World Series. I mean, some of the best teams in baseball that we've seen over the last 10 years have a hard time winning the World Series. And so, um, so the whole point is to be competitive, be in the playoffs, be there every year, and give yourself the best shot. And, you know, good things can happen. You've been over the yeah. highest tax bracket for a couple of years now. I know you mentioned any team would yeah. want to get below that. Do you have a yeah. time frame for when you would like to make that happen? You know, I, I think it's probably predicated on, on the development of a farm system. You know, once we start having prospects that are, you know, playing and, and, and producing, I think it becomes a lot easier to start moving that payroll down. So if you have to live yeah. up there for another couple of years until you're okay with that? Do I want to? The answer is no. Okay? I mean, you know, we'll, we'll take it year to year. Yeah. Could you ever envision committing to spend a, a billion dollars in a single off season like the, the Dodgers did? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, that's over a longer period of time, right? I mean, uh, um, that's a lot of money, and and uh, obviously, uh, you know, we went after one of those players that, uh, you know, they made made that billion dollar, uh, you know, for, for them their investment, and uh, you know, listen, in the end, you know, you try to decide what's best for the team and and you know wh where your payroll is at the time and what you're willing to commit to over a longer period of time and you know if you're going to commit those dollars you better be pretty sure that you know these are special players Pete Alonzo updated us at the beginning of camp that there hadn't you had guys held off on that one for a while <laughs> <laughs> that there had <laughs> I, I lost my bet <laughs> nine minutes fifty seconds <laughs> He said then that there hadn't been any long-term talks between the two sides. Has that changed at all in the past month plus? You know, we, we, haven't, we, have, we haven't had any discussions. And I think at this point, I think, you know, as far as for Pete, it's best for him to go, you know, have a great year and not be distracted. I think it's best for the ball club. We know how to do this. You know, we've, we did it with Edwin. We did it with Brandon after the season. And, and so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out when we get there. Is there an appetite for me? Your perspective to do anything like that with the younger players, say Alvarez, for example. Listen, I, I, I'm open to ideas. A anything that you know I think is in the long-term interest of, of the team, um, I'll entertain. Um, you know, when David comes to me with those ideas, we'll we'll talk about it. Tom Ricketts went on the record recently saying that he does not speak to Scott Boris when it comes to negotiations. He's missing the fun. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Because he wants to, you know, leave that to his head of baseball ops right. and not 
undermine him or interfere. Have you committed to or would you commit to such a approach with you and David? And I have a good relationship with Scott, and, and I think I add value to that relationship with David. And so um, um, I, I don't see that changing. And, and uh, you know, I mean, if it works for Tom, that's great. And, you know, I'll do it my way. And, but I have a great relationship with Scott. So, and I, I you know, I, 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 I enjoy the conversation. Where are you in terms of um, potentially achieving what you'd like to achieve at Willett's Point around the ballpark, that whole thing? Well, I think, you know, we have a great plan and, and um, you know, we're waiting for the, uh, for the state to, you know, give us the applications and to apply for, you, know, you have to apply for the license. And, and so that's all going to come down probably over the next 12 to 18 months. But I think, you know, we've done a ton of work. We've done a ton of work with the community. Um, We've, I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled. There's overwhelming support from the community for this project. I think the fans are going to love it. You know, they keep talking about wanting something to do around City Field, and and you know what we're planning. I think is really is going to is going to amaze them. I'll be a little disappointed that there'll be less you know repairs that we can do around you <laughs> know, for, for for people's cars, and maybe we can keep a few of those shops around. But there's nothing to do there after the game, before the game, and so. Um, I, you know, I view this as a greenfield opportunity where, you know, we've got a phenomenal project and, and uh, uh, you know, I'm excited to actually, you know, show the, show the world what we're doing and we will do that at some point. How's the roof coming? <laughs> yeah, the roof, the roof, the roof, that's never going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that ship is still too expensive, you know, I mean, I think it's like $800 million. If I win Powerball, you're going to do that? You're going to hold that to them. Yes. You know something? You're going to see alligator arms there. <laughs> <laughs> what is the highlight of that whole project in your, in your eyes? Well, I just think, you know, building uh, a, um, you know, I mean, it, it, this thing is like incredible. When, when we unveil it so you can actually see it, it is transformational to the community, to the area. I mean, you know, we're, we're obviously spending a lot of money there and, and and building something I think the community, the fans, and I'm going to be proud of. What can you tell us about some of the changes at City Field and kind of your vision, I guess, yeah. for the further development of the park itself? Well, I call it the money pit. Okay, <laughs> okay, so, you know, I don't know if you ever saw that movie. That's what it feels like. And, and uh, so, but, you know, we're always thinking about new ways to engage the fans. And, you know, I, I have, I've engaged a uh, working group to kind of think about the future of City Field. And uh, it's still very early in progress, and, and, and uh, at least lay out a blueprint of what we might do if we choose to do it. Um, so, you know, we'll see. You know, it's still early, and, and, uh, but there's always something to do. I mean, there's, you know, it's, there's always uh, uh, interesting projects to, to at least think about. All right. What are you most looking forward to this year? I just, I'm looking forward to great baseball. I mean, I think I think this team's going to really excite people. I mean, it's, you know, I think diving for baseballs, you know, great catches, um, you know, watching our young players develop, watching new players come up from the farm system. I mean, you know, I mean, the fans talk about it. they love prospects. Well, guess what? You know, they're going to they're going to see them. And and you know, when I said it before, and I'll say it again, what I ask the fans is give give them a chance. Okay, I mean, this is you know, it's it's not easy breaking into the major leagues and and and. Uh, um, you know, it, I, I, I really would love to see the fans be highly supportive and, and not base it on just a few games or a few weeks. And, and, uh, but I, I think they're going to see some great young talent and, you know, over the next few years, and that's something to get excited by. At this, yeah. When we talked to you last spring training, Sandy was out of the business role, uh, out of the president role, and you yeah. said you were taking on a more active approach. You had Thursdays at City Field yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Now that you have your baseball president and your business president, I'm are, free. Are, you, are, you, are, you, are you? Are you? How involved are you day to day or week to week now? Still, I mean, you know, I've got two professionals. You know, on the baseball side, you know, obviously, you know, less so. I mean, listen, we've always had good baseball people, but um, you know, on the business side, I've got a real professional running the day to day, which has really freed me up. You know, I have this other thing that I run <laughs> called a hedge fund, and. And so, you know, it, it's freed me up to focus on, you know, thing that I probably do the best. And, and um, so, uh, you know, that, I'm excited by that, okay, because now I, I get to, you know, do the, do the thing I think I do best, which is high-level thinking, but not necessarily the execution 
of, on, on the day-to-day. -day. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's, it, it's great for me. Steve, uh, yeah. to follow up on Tim's first question, he, he mentioned what you're looking forward to. Do you allow yourself to even think about the opposite, that there's probably 30 teams right now saying, oh, our young players are going to be great and the future's great and they've all learned new pitches and yeah. we're going to do. Like, what is the implication if you're wrong? Well, if I'm wrong, I got to re redouble my efforts. What am I going to do? I mean, uh, it's listen. It's I always say it's really hard to predict the future. Have you ever noticed that? Right? That is a fool's errand. And so, but all you can do is assess what you have. You know what it what it what it looks like compared to the way it looked like, and then you know, I tend to be optimistic. I can't help it. And so. Um, but I think I have good reason to be optimistic that they're, that you know that the talent that we're creating, we're making players better, we're improving them. I always wanted that. You know, they're, the best teams do that, and now we're doing that. I think ultimately that's got to that's got to give us, you know, the best opportunity to to perform at at, at the highest levels. So you know, it's it, it, it's going to take some time still, right? These things just don't happen overnight, but. Um, yeah, I'm really encouraged. You know, I'm really encouraged by the, the, not not just the player talent, but the type of person that we've um, hired into the organization. And so th this is turning into a world class organization. And so you know, my 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 hope, my goal would be that that over time that creates sustainable winning. Where are you compared to maybe you would have hoped you would have been at when you bought the team back in 2020? Yeah, I would have hoped that would, you know, we would have had more winning seasons, you know. So, uh, but it's not easy. Like in the end, you know, I was given what I was given, okay. And so, um, and and the thing, you know, if you if you wanted, to, I've always said I want a sustainable farm system. Well, you can't just it, they don't grow on trees, okay. So that takes time. Um, you know, we didn't trade our prospects away. You know, we're start, you know, we, we allow them to develop, um, and, and we're starting to see the fruits of that. Obviously. You know, I made a major decision last year to, tr you know, make uh, trades at the deadline that that certainly boosted and, and accelerated the the the, uh, the depth of the farm system, and and we're starting to see the fruits of that. And so, and, and listen, we got another draft coming up in a, in a couple months. I mean, we're going to, you know, for the, I mean, for the first time, I would say that we're starting to look stacked. Okay, and I don't think I don't think I've ever would have used that term before. Okay, and that's a good feeling. Okay, so um, you know between that and our ability to use our resources in the free agency market, that's a pretty powerful combination. So I'm hopeful.